Hello and welcome to the latest episode of the GI Huddle. Today we're speaking to Canadian Gaming Association President and CEO Paul Burns about the potential of sports wagering and iGaming in Canada. Hi Paul, thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Um, it's no problem at all. Um, obviously, there's plenty of uh, exciting developments in the, in the Canadian uh, market at the moment, or certainly potential developments. Uh, so we thought you were the, the perfect person to speak to us today. Thanks for joining us. And maybe by way of intro, could you maybe tell us a bit about the Canadian Gaming Association and, and what you do as your, your, uh, in your role for the association? Sure. I'm, the Canadian Gaming Association is a national trade association uh, for the gaming industry in Canada. We represent... Uh, operators and suppliers, both in land-based online um, gaming, and we have uh, our primary roles around education and advocacy. We uh, we work because of large government involvement in gaming in Canada. We often do a lot of advocacy work to government, uh, like we're doing right now on sports betting, um, and we work cooperatively with regulators and other uh, entities and stakeholders across uh, the industry to really further uh, and enhance uh, the opportunities for the gaming industry. So it sounds like um, you're doing a lot of work for the industry and it's probably quite, quite a busy time for you at the moment. Um, yes. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> maybe, maybe tell, tell us a bit more about that before I go. Oh, it's, it has been. I mean, beyond um, right now, a lot of the, most of the casinos in Canada are closed uh, due to the COVID uh, restrictions that are in place by government. So obviously 2020 was a, a horrendous year for the industry in that respect. And it's carrying on into the early part of 21. Um, but there are some some really good bright spots on the horizon, and that's uh, uh, finally getting Canada's sports betting laws modernized um, to permit single event wagering. We've had parlay wagering legal for years, um, but not single event. And the province of Ontario is moving to create a, a regulatory framework uh, to license online gaming. Um, as everybody probably knows, Canada has a quite robust gray market. And so uh, Ontario being the first jurisdiction to try and tackle that and bring uh, some uh, a regulatory framework to online gaming. So there's some really great opportunities ahead for 21. So we're, that's what we're focusing on right now. Absolutely. You mentioned kind of two um, key kind of fundamental developments uh, in, in the market and certainly something in the, everyone in the industry has noticed. Uh, the, the first one I wanted to ask you about was, was obviously you mentioned sports wagering. And as, as a sports better myself, as, as, as someone who, who works in the industry and, and has spoken to numerous people who kind of work in sports betting as well, um, could you possibly maybe just, even in a basic sense, talk me through how it works in Canada? Because I simply can't imagine. So it's the Super Bowl this weekend. Um, it's, it's illegal to place a bet on the Super Bowl without adding two more selections for the parlay. Is, is that right, essentially? Yeah, through the, 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 the legal regulated options in Canada are through the sports lottery products offered by the provincial lottery corporations. And so they, um, they are, there's pools and prop bets, not in, prop bets not in every jurisdiction, but in most. And so you have to um, uh, create a parlay, uh, minimum of three in most cases, some places it's two, um, to, uh, to place a bet. And, uh, you know, even a couple of years ago, prop bets weren't, found so you'd have to probably par pair it with an NHL game or two to, to make a bet on the Super Bowl at the time so um, yeah that's um, that's really what it's uh, it's it's been that's and that's why Canadians really gravitated to the offshore online market and there's still a quite a robust illegal bookmaking business in Canada you know primarily operated by organized crime and so they have their, their and so Canadians have their choices because they bet um, probably almost, well, over $14 billion through the offshore legal channels versus about $500 million through the sports lottery products. So that alone tells you where the preferences are and where the consumers have chosen to go get their products. Yeah, it, it certainly sounds like it. Obviously, the, the, the legalization of, of single event sports wagering is, is kind of, um, it, I believe it's on the horizon, but maybe, maybe you can talk us through exactly what the timeline is about. <laughs> It's, it's been a frustrating odyssey, to say the least. It's been about 10 years for me personally working on this file. Um, we've had previous, we've had a bill passed in, from the House of Commons, but uh, didn't pass our Senate, which is like the UK House of Lords. It's a second chamber. Um, so this time we actually have two bills right now in the House of Commons in Canada. Uh, a private member's bill sponsored by uh, Kevin Waugh, a member of parliament from Saskatchewan. Uh, it's actually being debated again today. Um, and the government, um, sensing and understanding 
the need to get it done and government bills move faster through the legislative process um, have introduced their own bill uh, in late November. Um, they're almost identical. Uh, there's a couple tweaks in the government bill that's a little bit different, but nothing significant. And uh, we're hoping that uh, one of the two of them are successful in the next few months because the frustrating part has been is that every major party in the House of Commons has supported this initiative. Uh, provincial governments, uh, organized labor has come out in favor, business organizations, communities, uh, sports organizations, both amateur and most recently the professional sports leagues. Um, so it's, it's a matter of there's no one really standing in the way, it's process. And that's the frustrating part. It's just the wheels of government sometimes don't turn at all or don't turn fast enough. And that's, that's the agonizing part because as I said, this is Super Bowl weekend is, um, you know, a time when everybody takes a little bit of more focus on sports betting and, you know, seeing what uh, the growth in the U S marketplace has been, um, has been, um, Tremendous, and that spills over into Canada when we see a lot of U.S. broadcasts of sports, and so the awareness and increased uh, interest is is rising. So it's you know we're we're hopeful for government, but if best case scenario at this point is this spring that these bills could pass, and that's uh, we're working as hard as we can towards that, and hopefully encouraging the parliamentary process to pick up the speed and get it done. But that's. The spring is is kind of what we have on the horizon to seeing uh, this completed. Yeah, I can certainly understand your frustration. And when you talk about um, bill being passed in spring, would that mean a, a market launch in spring, or, or would that be later down the line? That would probably be a bit later. The provincial governments, uh, you know, much like the U.S., is every province has its own regulatory framework. And right now, the CGA is working. We have an industry committee. We work with regulators, and so we have a group looking at developing standards for sports wagering. So there is some level of harmonization across the country because we're not a big country. So if we can find ways to make it uh, more advantageous for uh, suppliers and operators to do business in jurisdiction to jurisdiction, and so we're looking. For, we're working on that now. Uh, I suspect it would be, um, you know, late spring, summer, and definitely by fall, I think would be the, the absolute. There's no other legislative issues that need to be taken care of, even at the provincial level. It's all done by regulation. So it's, uh, there's no, no more of that, unfortunately. The legislative wheels don't need to turn anymore. We'll be done. And, uh, and the provinces can then choose uh, when and how, and it's all up to, it'll be up to them then to see when their rollout in their market is. Mm, that, that, that sounds like a, a, a definite cause of, of optim, uh, optimism. Sorry. And um, a question I wanted to ask you is, um, obviously you mentioned US gaming and, and a number of states have, have, have certainly, um, you know, New Jersey has, has absolutely flourished, but some new US states are still kind of in, I guess in a similar situation to, to Canada, such as New York, for instance, um, because they're not quite there yet. But would you say the, um, the COVID-19 pandemic and the kind of the shortage of land-based revenue and, and, and you know, the, the, the fallout of this caused has really changed the opinion of, of some uh, policymakers and legislators who have thought, yeah, we, we, if even though we might have had time and patience in the past, we really need to maybe get this through now quicker. And that's what we were, you know, we've, in the fall, we were quite hopeful. Things seemed to be moving quickly. The government stepped up and brought in their own bill. And that would be some, uh, maybe even expedited process because we hadn't talked to the government early on why the, you know, the provincial um, governments has been supporting the industry as best they can through um, the COVID process and supporting business. Um, we were asking the federal government to pass this. It actually, it doesn't cost you anything. And it's, it's a huge help coming out of COVID for our industry to be able to be offered this product, be on a level playing field um, with uh, the offshore market and others where we haven't been able to offer the product. And so they heard us, but it's again, the time of, of uh, the execution is where we're, where we're, uh, we're a little concerned right now. It's not moving as fast as we'd like. Yeah, no, I, again, I can un understand your frustration. Um, but um, again, another, another sort of uh, optimistic positive topic is you mentioned uh, Ontario and uh, iGaming. Um, obviously, that's a, maybe a slightly different time scale to, to the sports betting, but can, can you talk us through kind of the latest developments there and what that might mean for the market? For sure. The, um, the Ontario government announced in the spring of 2019 uh, that they would be looking to explore options for creating a regulated marketplace uh, for online gaming in recognition of the large uh, gray market that's occurred. Um, can, Ontarians is probably a half a billion dollars or so being earned out of Ontario. Um, 
uh, through the gray market. And so they've started a consultation with industry through the Alcohol and Gaming Commission um, just to, to get a flavor of, uh, of what the issues were and, and uh, went back. And then this uh, past uh, fall in their provincial budget announced that they would be moving forward and put more of the wheels uh, structure in place around that, that the Alcohol and Gaming Commission of Ontario would be uh, the primary conductor manager of this and oversee and that uh, so it wouldn't be done through the uh, Ontario Lottery and Gaming Corp, which is a provincial crown agency for gaming. It would be done through the regulator. And uh, that uh, so now what we're waiting for is the last round of consultation to begin. And that's really around looking at um, uh, finalizing regulatory standards. Uh, I think Ontario's taken a, a very uh, progressive approach in looking at this understanding. It's hard to ask companies when they're participating, they're in the market already, they have customers, uh, but we're going to ask you to step in and be regulated. And we're going to step in and be taxed. And, you know, that's a, that's a delicate balance in terms of how they want to, you know, achieve that where people just say, no, I'm not going to participate and walk away because they don't like the framework. And so they're trying to ensure that it meets um, some best practices and regulatory standards from across the world and, and not be overly aggressive in terms of tax rate. And that's a balance that, that needs to, to, that needs to be finished in the next few months as they um, want to engage. So putting out regulatory standards for discussion and comment, um, more discussions on market structure uh, on things like taxation fees that are be required. Uh, that's the next round. That's what we're hoping to see start in the next month or so. Um, mm -hmm. The understanding is that I think that without a firm date at this point on when the market will open, I think there's an expectation by the end of 21 that they're going to be a, in a very, in a good place to do that at some point um, late Q4 or on that, that that's when I think people can start to look for when they can see a market open in, in Ontario. Um, and the nice part is that there are other jurisdictions now sort of taking a hard look at what Ontario is doing. So uh, I, I, I don't think anybody will, uh, will start another province. I don't expect to start until after they see what Ontario's model really looks like and how it starts. I think they want to see what it's going to work the way they think it is uh, before another province will jump in, but it's, they're optimistic. I mean, and we're seeing good signs that uh, um, because for the gaming industry in Canada, then it, it, we start to level the playing field, especially from the regulatory side. And that's been the primary focus of the CGA. And we've been talking about the need to, to level the regulatory playing field and make sure everybody's playing by the same rules. Providing there's, there's agreement and, and the launches are timely. And, and as you say, the regulation and the tax rate are sort of in, inviting to companies. Um, how big can, can I gaming and sports betting be in, in Canada? Because there's, there's a lot of excitement. Um, but can you possibly place some, maybe not some exact figures, but some uh, a kind of percentage or, or some sort of gauge, maybe compared to some of the, the markets in the U.S., exactly how big can it be? Well, I think that, you know, we, the, the exciting part about Ontario's move is Ontario is the largest province in the country. There's almost 15 million people. Um, it would rank up there in the, you know, the top five in the U.S. state's size. Um, and I think that... Uh, it, you know, we have uh, robust access to broadband internet and great take up on mobile devices and things in our country. We're very wired that way. Um, there's been lots of estimates around what it could be is and where it's going. I think that, you know, when I look at Ontario specifically, there's talk that this could be, um, you know, a half a billion in terms of right now, um, in terms of what's being earned today by the, the, uh, the offshore operators out of, uh, out of Ontario, I suspect that, you know, there's significant growth coming. It's really making sure that sports comes is the, been the key to this mm -hmm. um, because it does represent such a big part of the online space. And if this bill doesn't pass in timely fashion, what happens to that market? And that's why some numbers have been a bit all over the place, but I, I you know, it's uh, the Canadian um, market is, is significant in size. It's almost $17 billion. Um, I suspect that we've seen uh, there's probably another billion, billion and a half in, in online at this point in time uh, right now across the country. And so, you know, we've, I think there's, um, it all depends on the rules the province is set. It all depends on, on uh, a number of factors. So I don't want to say it's going to be X because I don't want anybody's hopes too high. And, and, but it is, 
uh, you know, we're a, we're a robust gaming country um, and we have all the factors um, that fit to being a very lucrative market for a lot of people to participate in. So it's, uh, that's why we're excited in terms of being able to get the level of regulatory playing field, get everybody in and, and then really let the market grow. Because I think we've seen, um, there's lots of interest. Canada pubs, I think, punches above its weight in terms of its size and in terms of the online market and participation. And so uh, that's why we're glad the governments have started to make this move. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you, you mentioned a, a few kind of next steps a lot of them are maybe political um, with both eye gaming and sports betting for the, for the Canadian gaming association, what is your kind of your immediate priority and, and your, your very next steps as we kind of hopefully take enter this kind of new phase, I guess, of Canadian gaming. Well, we're working hard right now to make sure that sports betting uh, gets uh, the legislation gets finished, that the regulatory environment gets created in such a way that there's uh, tremendous opportunities for, for the, sports betting operators and suppliers to the sector to participate in the market. And, you know, as we look down the road in terms of online, in terms of leveling that playing field, getting those regulatory uh, models in place and jurisdictions, because we think it's, it's time to do that. We've watched the industry, online industry grow exponentially. And when I started at the CGA back in 2006, um, our first thing was we need to regulate internet gaming and we've never gone off that. And we're finding now <laughs> seeing the fruition that provinces are realizing, yeah, I guess this is the way we have to do it. We have to bring in a regulatory model because they've tried other things that hasn't worked. Um, but inviting, um, inviting operators in on a regulatory framework and signing up is the right way to go. And we hope that others pick it up. So uh, plenty going in, uh, going on, sorry, in, in, Canadian gaming and um, you know you guys I'm sure are going to be very busy in the coming months um, I've got uh, one last question for you and that is in terms of obviously I think at the start of 2021 where we're hopefully not in the middle of but we're certainly in, in the midst of a pandemic um, a, a question an answer I hope you'll be able to give and people might want to well then will definitely want to hear is do you think with, with these developments uh, 2021 can be you know a lot better year than 2024 for Canadian gaming <laughs> oh it, we're definitely um hopefully that and we see the back half of 21 being um, uh, hopefully a very productive uh, six months as we we finish 21 because with all the work being done now we hope to see the the, the results of all of this uh, come to fruition um, as we head into the late summer fall because I think it's uh, it's needed we've had a lot of people across Canada um, at its peak 90,000 people that work in our industry not coming able to come to work um, it's been hard. Some, you know, in province like British Columbia, the casinos have never reopened. They're approaching 12 months of being closed. Uh, it's been extremely hard on, on the communities where we operate and on, on local businesses who rely on the sector for, for, uh, to supply um, goods and services. And so it's the depth of, 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 of effect has been, has been broad and deep. And so, yes, these are great signs. Um, as I say, there is a light at the end of the tunnel, and I don't think it's the train. So I think we're pretty, uh, we're, we're, we're looking ahead. So we just need a few more vaccines and we're way to go. Well, Paul, thank you very much for, for your time, uh, answers and insight. And um, as ever, we wish you the, the best of luck. And hopefully we can, we can get some, uh, at least a couple of things legalized. <laughs> in terms of gaming, kind of... We're hoping. So, uh, no, I appreciate it, Tim. Thanks for having me. And anytime, always happy to chat. No problem. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thanks for watching our interview with Paul Burns about sports betting and iGaming in Canada. For the latest on Canada and the US, read our January-February edition of Gaming America magazine, which you can find on GamingAmerica.com.